2024 has been one of the most active severe weather seasons on record and the most active dating back to the year 2011. As we work over the next couple of months, the big question is, will that continue? Our team here at BAM Weather has been investigating the top pattern drivers that can lead to severe storm clusters and what we call derechos as we work through the heart of the summer months. Right now, there's already been over 1,100 tornado reports this year, and there's been over 6,600 damaging wind reports, and we're keeping an eye on the potential for a big heat wave late June and into July, which would enhance the threats for severe storm clusters and potentially derechos. We take a look here, the area that we're most concerned about off the bat, parts of the Dakotas through the Midwest into the Ohio Valley and then out into parts of the Mid-Atlantic. That storm track there is classic in terms of getting damaging wind events. And if we think back to a couple of recent years, a lot of these areas have experienced damaging wind events over the past several summers. In fact, some of these areas have already had a derecho just this year. Normally, we're only going to average a couple every few years. We've already had two across much of this area just in 2024. The things that we want to look at in terms of pattern drivers as we work over the next couple of months to determine how big of a threat that this actually is, is our oceanic temperatures in the Pacific, and it's our oceanic temperatures along the equator off the coast of South America. One of the big reasons that we are at an increased threat of heat domes and heat waves as we go throughout this summer is because of the developing La Nina. And specifically here, looking at the coldest ocean waters in the La Nina region developing off the coast of South America. Why is that important? That particular setup tends to favor more heat wave, more heat domes, and more storm clusters riding around the heat dome in a ring of fire pattern as we go throughout the summer months. Another big thing is the Pacific Ocean. And we're looking specifically here at near record breaking warm ocean water temperatures extending east from Japan, well north of Hawaii. You can see temperatures there three to four degrees Celsius above normal at the sea surface. We also have some cooler than normal waters along the west coast of the United States. Traditionally, when you get this type of a pattern, you tend to get, again, more heat waves in the summer months, which really helps drive these storms to be more intense. The more heat that you can get, the more heat that storms can tap into, the larger the threat is for those damaging wind events and, yes, potentially derechos. If we look just at the Pacific Ocean first, the North Pacific Ocean, and we look at the top five in terms of the strongest what we call PDO, that's the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. That's what that driver is. That's what that warmth is in the cent North Central Pacific. If we look at the top five on record, similar to this year, right now it's the second strongest on record, you get an increased threat of heat across the central portion of the country, especially over the central plains in areas like Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, Oklahoma, and into parts of Iowa. This signal would indicate as we work into June and into especially July, that there could be the potential of uh, some pretty notable heat waves, maybe even at times some dangerous heat across the central portion of the country, but it's not just there. It's a widespread hotter than normal threat. I also wanted to factor in the La Nina and what we were doing with that. And if we take a look at a combination of these oceanic pattern drivers, it would indicate the potential for more storm cluster activity, especially across the central portion of the country. Now, it may not ultimately end up being quite this wet. These may be a little bit more active than we actually end up being, maybe a little bit more moisture than we actually end up seeing, because at times when you get those heat domes, you can get dry stretches. So with all that being said, and all that in mind, with the pattern drivers favoring the potential for these storm clusters that can produce big wind events, it's important to understand what a derecho actually is. Number one, it's a long-lived windstorm with a line of quick-moving thunderstorms. It often will develop into a bow echo, is what you see on the radar, where it's almost curved like a backward C uh, as it moves through. There's also a specific definition that you need to have in terms of derechos. Gusts have to be 58 miles per hour or more. Oftentimes with these, you can get 90, 100 
and the damaged swath must extend more than 400 miles in distance. The swath also must be at least 60 miles wide. And so I also want to show you all what it looks like as these are developing. Oftentimes, it'll actually start as a smaller storm or a smaller cluster of storms, but as it moves through that high instability and that high heat environment, the storms will expand from north to south and they'll grow and the wind will surge outward. In terms of the setup that you need, often you get a big ridge of high pressure or again that dome of heat across parts of the south central or southeastern United States and you get these progressive derechos or progressive storm clusters that ride around the northern periphery of that high pressure. So how common are derechos? Typically, if you look out to the west across parts of Iowa, across parts of Nebraska and the Dakotas and Minnesota, you only get a derecho once every two to four years. For areas like the Ohio Valley, down through Missouri and parts of Texas and Oklahoma, you get about one a year and only a very small portion of the country across Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas and southern Missouri gets four derechos every three years. And so we've already had several derechos across the United States just this year, and we're not even quite yet into the prime part of the season. Here's a look at the climatology in terms of when derechos most likely form. May, June, and July are the most likely months to see derechos develop. And especially late June and July from a climatology standpoint, there tends to be more. In fact, if you go back through time, there have been several derechos just on June 29th. That seems to be the day that historically has produced the most with a massive one in 2012 and another one just last year in 2023 that moved through parts of the Midwest. And so what do our pattern drivers say about the threat? If we take a look at some of our top five years in terms of the Pacific Ocean, we look at 2023, it had one derecho. 2022 had three. 2012 had five derechos. 2011 had two. And 2001 had one derecho. And I also think there are some similarities to 2020, which had five derechos. Yeah. Also take a look here at some of the weekly data over the next four or five weeks, and we're seeing data increase heat potential across the central and southern tier of the U.S. And so around the periphery of that building heat, I think that we need to keep an eye on the potential again for those storm clusters. Going back in time and looking at this from a historical perspective, 2012, we also look at a year like uh, 2023. Here was that derecho last year. It started in northern Missouri. It swept through Illinois, eventually into Indiana. It went well more than 450 miles. And then the big one across Iowa that damaged major corn in August of 2020. It produced up to 120 mile an hour wind gusts, and it swept through pretty much the entire state of Iowa, northern Illinois, and northern Indiana. And so I, I think that many of these areas that over the past couple of years have experienced damaging derechos, I think they could be at play once again this year. The important thing to keep in mind is that the pattern is ripe for these severe storm clusters, potentially heat, and yes, potentially derechos as we go through late June and throughout the month of July. We'll be keeping an eye on things, and of course, if it does look like the setup in the short term could favor one of these types of events, we'll be live streaming, we'll be having updates on our YouTube page here and across all of our social media platforms. And of course, if you need a more detailed forecast, you can go over to BAMWX.com and look into our Clarity platform where we provide detailed forecast and consulting to businesses, events, and sporting teams all across the United States. Appreciate you all watching. Be sure to like the page. We'll have more updates over the next few weeks.